clean. Oh, look at that. It's a... Oh, it's coming off. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, right. So Denise was found on a remote beach on a Great Capo Island, and there was no tracks or road that uh, was going to that beach. So they uh, had to put her on a bodyboard and tow her um, like off that beach uh, with a boat. Then got her to the ferry, and then she went on the ferry, and then on a, in a car to the to the vet. Um, and then she was um, stitched up there because she had uh, very bad boat strikes. Um, her flipper was uh, half chopped off, and the boat had s uh, sliced her throat. Uh, and the eyelid had been chopped off, so the vet had kept her overnight and uh, stitched that back up um, and then she came here in a car and then we took her on a boat uh, here yeah so it was quite an operation to get her to this island so yeah I think it would be about 10 people that were involved in the rescue yeah well the biggest thing about Denise is that I mean as you can tell she is massive and whereas other turtles they come in they're juveniles they have more of a quick stay <laughs> Um, Denise had such big injuries and eats so much that it's way more care than any of the little turtles. But also because she's breeding age, it's a lot more exciting to get her back out into the wild so she can continue doing what, what she's you know, supposed to do. When she came in, um, she had such an, like an animated personality and she was so much fun when she was in the ICU tank. She was in the ICU tank for, I think about four months. Um, so all those wounds could, could, could heal and um, so that took a while and she just like she would love her shell scratches and she would try to grab your uh, your hands with her with her rear flippers her injury basically amputated her left flipper with a propeller but it also cut her throat from the bottom of the throat right through to the top in two places, right from bottom to top, as well as um, cut her eyebrows off. And they were all stitched back on and stitched back together. So when I pulled those stitches out, you know, I lay down beside her and she did not, yeah, while I was pulling stitches out of her eyes, she did not move and didn't flinch. She just watched me and, you know, she knew what, what we were doing. Generally, all the animals get fed 5% of their body weight per day. So in the end, she was 140 kilos, which means that you know she should be on around seven kilos, and she was a squid eater primarily. An animal her size is over a thousand dollars a month, so you know maybe 15, 15 to 18 thousand dollars worth of food in the wild. She'll be back to eating seaweed and sea grasses. They're amazing animals, and it's just I guess sad. It's happy to see her like she's extremely healthy like she is. But sad to have to see her have to, you know, go through a life with those, you know, flipperless, you know, thanks to a, another boat. She'll live well. It's just that, um, you know, she is obviously well and truly in that breeding stage of her life. She's over a metre long. Um, it's just going to be difficult for her to, you know, find a way up the beach and and lay. So that's that's sort of what I was thinking. It's just you know, the problems that she's got in front of her, but, you know, they're an amazingly resilient animal and they just never give up. They don't. She's been here for over a year, so... Uh, we thought she might be a little bit rusty and she kind of moved sideways for a little while but she, she figured it out pretty quickly. But just a really good feeling to release a breeding female out into the wild. And yeah, you know, we've seen you know, numerous animals here where they've, you know, they're out, their limbs are rotting off. You know, horrible, horrible injuries and, and they're such resilient animals, you know, they try and push through it. But you know, most of them, you know, they're obviously all become amputees and, and there's a lot that fishermen can do with, you know, don't leave their, their line out there. Try not to get hooked up you know, on reef or rocks and end up with 100 metres of line left lying in the water because that's going to be there for the next thousand years, not the, ne not the next couple of weeks. It's there forever. What we do on the mainland affects these gorgeous animals out in the sea and the 
I think the sea generally gets forgotten you know, that, it, that they are wildlife as well and because you can't see them because they're under the water you know I think we as humans tend to regard them as lesser animals and uh, that's definitely not the case with these guys.